What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. Today, we got a heavyweight song battle. We got the Pogues versus the great George Harrison, brought to us by friend, longtime supporter, and patron of the channel, T Super. Thank you, T Super. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. If you'd like to support us in any way, check out that Patreon link below or the patron link on the end screen. We could not do it without the patrons. Our T Soup knows a lot about music, just all around great guy. Here's what he has to say. July is my birthday month, and I'm doing this in July of 2024. Ever since I was a kid, the day has been more one to get through than one to celebrate. I kind of relate to that. Always too much in my head, not wanting the extra attention. Also not wanting to be forgotten. The July battle picks pick matches my headspace in early July with my birthday towards the end of the month. All right, man. Let's jump into it. We got the Pogues first. We got Down All the Days from the Peace and Love album in 1989, their fourth studio album. T Soup says, This is a very underrated LP. It tells the tale of Irish writer painter Christy Brown, who had cerebral palsy and could paint right only with his left foot. T Soup says himself as an educational writer, I still connect with lyrics such as the tap, tap, tapping of the typewriter pays, which is the best I can say of my current job. But I connect more with the writer's layman about never being asked about which football team he supports as if the only person who cares about his everyday interests is himself. The song itself is too short and seems unfinished, but it's still a favorite. It could have offered a lot more if Shane McGowan had put more into it, perhaps. I can connect with that too. T Soup and I are about the same age. Next month is my birthday month. I can really relate as I read his message to me on Patreon with a lot of what he's talking about big time. So I'm looking forward to these. I'm going to have the lyrics up as always. Thanks again, T. Sue.
All right, down all the days. One of the highlights for me is a simplistic thing. It's the type, type, type in a way of the typewriter and being somebody who's older. I remember those days, that sound. I haven't heard that sound in whatever, 30 years, right, of the of the typewriter. And I kind of at times miss that. Yes, it's way easier on a computer because if you make mistakes, you don't have to use all the whiteout and all the different things or start over. No one's measuring your margins or all these things that anybody under 50 probably doesn't have any idea what I'm talking about. But down all the days, the tap, tap, tapping of the typewriter pays, the gentle rattling of the drays, down all the days. The chorus just kind of uh, sticks in your head and it's repeated three times. There's only two verses. The second verse, I've often had to depend upon the kindness of strangers, but I've never been asked and I, I never replied. If I supported Glasgow Rangers, I don't know. There's something to that, of course, but just the sound of the Pogues. And I read this is the first album. It's their fourth album. It's the first album where they start to kind of go away from the total traditional Irish sound on every song. And I kind of saw that here, yet you still knew it was the Pogues. And Shane McGowan was such a talented guy, you know, obviously dealt with lots of bouts of substance abuse, but he's he's one of my, he's up there, man. I, I super, I don't know if I'll say he's one of my favorites, but he, he's he's a guy that, I mean, I didn't know anything about the Pogues when I, we started this channel, but I super enjoy this. And uh, yeah, I super relate to this one. So let's go to our second song and a song, obviously, I do know really well. George Harrison, Beware of Darkness from the All Things Must Pass LP in 1970. Trey and I did a review of this album. There's two parts to it. So like we went all in, but it's a big album. But uh, we are doing a particular version because T-Soup said this needed a version from the 50th anniversary, super deluxe version of the album. And you can kind of see on the Spotify, but it's day two demo, take one. T-Soup says this solo acoustic version just hits harder. One of my favorite Harrison vocals ever. He also says the song serves as a warning to not get too low, too dark. Quote, beware of the thoughts that linger winding up inside your head, George sings. Great advice, sometimes hard for me to do. Like the Pogue song, this version seems too short. An unfinished version with perhaps more to offer. Maybe that's how I should look at myself too this birthday. I think that's good advice for all of us. I mean, this is insightful stuff, like I said. Uh, a couple things on this song. I'm not going to go into great detail. I could because we did so much on this album. But in the spring of 70, Harris invited some of the Krishna Movement's members to stay at Friar Park, of course, the place he had recently purchased the estate, to help him restore the large house and overgrown gardens and to give his home and a new home an intensely spiritual atmosphere. In his 1980 autobiography, so 10 years after, I Me, Mine, Harrison says he wrote Beware of Darkness at this time. He adds, I had some of my friends from the Radha Krishna Temple staying. Watch out from Maya. The lyrics are self-explanatory. But there's another little side to this, and this is a side that a lot of other people believe this was kind of about. But according to American keyboardist Bobby Whitlock, the song was partly inspired by Harrison's struggles with his former Beatles bandmates and the business manager, Alan Klein, in the period immediately after the band's breakup. Whitlock, who also stayed at Friar Park, and I don't know if it's at the same time or not, cites this as one of several preoccupations that made up, quote, a day in the life of George Harrison, along with the stresses of restoring the property with Patty Boyd, his wife at the time, dealing with Phil Spector's idiosyncrasies, the producer, who's, that's a whole nother story, and indulging the Harry Krishna devotee. So, Hit a lot on this plate. Uh, I've never heard this version. I look forward to it. Watch out now. Take a beware of falling swingers. Falling all around you. The pain that often lingers in your fingertips. Beware of darkness. Watch out now. Take a beware of the thoughts that linger. Winding up inside your head The hopelessness around you In the dead of night Beware of sadness It 
can hate you It will hurt you It can go and make you sore And that is not what you are here for Watch out now Take a beware of soft shoe shufflers Dancing down the sidewalks Pushing you in puddles In the dead of night Beware of Abco Watch out now, take a beware of falling swingers Crashing all around you The pain that often lingers very powerful version. I can see why tea soup likes it, especially if you're in a certain mood, because you just get lost in the anguish in his voice. You feel George's emotion. He's not faking this thing. There's a few little changes in the lyrics, too, on this one. It's a demo. You know, I think this probably is about everything, about his, his uh, difficulty with, you know, just reconciling that long relationship and what had happened with the Beatles and also with his Hare Krishna, you know, Faith, the faith in Hinduism and, and you know the Krishna movement in particular, but I mean, you feel it, man. You feel his emotions. A lot of singers sing songs and do them very well, but you know if they didn't write them or you know they're not in that particular mode, they might have wrote them, but it might be ten years past and they're not in that mindset anymore. But this one, he's right in the mindset and going through the pain. I think that's what adds to like the the real uh, the real emotion of it and why it really works. And now I have to pick a winner. I don't think there's some sort of like clear cut winner here. I always enjoy listening to the Pogue. So I think that was really good. It's hard because I know this song from Harrison so well. And I talk about this all the time when I do battles. There's there's recency bias. If I don't know either song, the second song you hear, the last one in your head, you'll fool yourself into thinking that's your fave every time if you're not really conscious of it. And then there's also this familiarity bias. If you know a song, you don't know the other one unless you're sick of that song that you know. Oftentimes that's going to be your winner. But I just think this version by Harrison was a particularly uh, wise choice by T. Soup because, like I talked about, the emotion of it, you strip away all the instrumentation and just let it be acoustic. So I go with George Harrison, Beware of Darkness, but there's no losers here today. I mean, I guess there is sort of, but both songs are really good. I need your help. What do you think down below? Who do you think won this battle? A early happy birthday to my man T. Soup. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Until next time, guys, I will see you.